baby boomers are going to lose a lot of their savings at a time in their life when they just won't recover. It's going to be ugly, folks. Today, we'll be discussing what baby boomers need to do to protect themselves before it's too late. Is it too late for you? Hey, stick around and we'll find out. Well, good morning, Ron. Morning. How are you, Jeff? <laughs> I'm good. Hey, good. for those of you that don't know, this is my brother, Ron, and uh, we've got this great show that that we've been doing. But one thing that we're going to be starting with that I'm I'm really scared about, Ron, is when I realize the content that we're going to be talking about today, I'm scared myself. I don't know about you. I'm a baby boomer. Ron's a baby boomer. And the notion of that I could lose my savings is really scary to me. So would you mind when we go through this show today, would you talk to me and for those baby boomers that don't really get it, talk to us like we're two years old like or five years old, the way uh, Denzel Washington said that in uh, the Philadelphia story. It's It's scary. It's scary to me thinking that it, the savings could be there because um, for me, I don't have a lot of investments and I don't, I rely upon a banker or somebody like that. And I know some of my friends do too. They don't know a lot of the terminology that goes on when uh, we're investing. So today we're going to talk about uh, what it is that you should be doing as a baby boomer to protect yourself. But Ron, maybe, you know, I know you've had an extensive background, so maybe fill the folks in about what you have done so that you can't, you've been prepared to be able to tell them about what it is that they need to do. Sure. Sure, Kat. This is it's probably going to be our, our most important show. Uh, this is our second show. We're going to be doing doing them every other week. Uh, but by way of my experience and credentials, I have uh, two master's degrees, uh, one in math and one in finance, so I'm reasonably bright. Uh, <laughs> I've been <laughs> consulting to institutions on their pension funds for 50 years, so I'm yeah. uh, an old dude, and, and I'm a boomer. Uh, and recently, um, well, first of all, before I say that, I have a patented process that's been used in 401k plans now for more than a decade. And it's sort of a guide on how to manage pension risk through time. And uh, for our listeners here, it would be for their savings, how to manage those savings through time. But before I get into what you need to do, uh, I, I want to scare you. I, I really want to frighten you and tell you. You what have already. You've scared me already just with right. the opening of that. Well, I could well, lose it. Well, it's, it's hard to lose it's working. Now. It's working. It's hard to lose things, you know. Yeah, but there's there's one thing that's different about boomers versus everybody else. We're old. Is, yeah, well, they're old, <laughs> and there's, there's there's 78 million of us. Yeah. And we are all generally in what's called in finance the risk zone, R I S K zone, and that is a zone that if you Google it, you'll find all sorts of literature. The other thing you want to Google is this concept called sequence of return risk. And what it really amounts to is, um, we're going to do a slide on this, but let me just say it right now. Your savings right now are likely to be as large as they're ever going to be. And losing that money now is going to cost you not just in dollar losses, but in your lifestyle. And the real threat here is no one wants to run out of money. Everybody wants to be able to retire and not be reliant on society, even though it's comforting to know it's there. Um, but uh, nobody really wants to be able to, not to be able to, to afford their living. Sequence of return risk and this risk zone thing basically says, if you lose money at this critical time, especially if we have the kind of losses we saw in 2008, which uh, a lot of people think is the, the next correction is going to be even worse, you won't be able to go back in the workforce. I guess you'd be a greeter at Walmart, but that's not going to pay many bills. Uh, what you're really going to end up doing is either spending all your money or, or changing your lifestyle significantly or both. So I guess I've thrown out all the scares out there, but. No, that, there's another scare here, Ron. 
and I can personally attest to this, financial problems cause health problems. Right. Exactly. It, it, I had a heart attack, as you know, because of yep. the financial stress. And it, it goes hand in hand. So not only were they losing the money, but they can lose their... And, and then there's also so the uh, social stigma that goes along with it yep. about losing your money, not being able to do the things you did before, and then being in a bind a real bind where you just you don't know how to get out of it it can cause you to die yeah it, it really can it, okay. it, it can have some major major uh reactions from it so um well this is an important show i'm really really excited to find out what do i need to do now maybe i should just tell you, you need to get safer but i'm going to really tell you exactly what to do at the end of the show and okay. I, I'm, I'm sure people are sitting there going, this guy is selling something. It's an infomercial. No, no, no. We're not about that. No. Okay. It, okay. No. Just, no. Um, but I, I will tell you what to do. But I want to, I want you to really feel why you need to do it. Because one of the things I'm going to say at the end here is, that, is I've, I've shared uh, my thoughts uh, with financial people, um, uh, journalists, and they all say, that's the message I've been, I've been telling my clients and friends for years. And nobody's going to do anything. And I'm going to tell you why you're not doing anything. So, so let's get started, Keith. Maybe on the, the okay, slide. Let's do the slides here. Okay, this is slide one. We're going to be showing you a bunch of slides here, folks. Right. So let, let's go to the slide about the uh, the risk zone, please, Keith. Okay. This here. Yes, please. Okay. So um, this is probably a complicated graph for many people, but let me explain. What's going on on the left hand side here is. The top of the graph is showing your savings through time. And we all start out when we work and we save a little bit, hopefully enough. And then that green line grows through time, but it generally reaches its peak when we're in the risk zone, which means we're, we're leaving the working life and, and we're going to retire. And that is the time when we are, if they've stopped getting checks or are about to stop getting uh, paid, and that asset saving is going to go down. Now there's a relatively new thing in 401k plans called a target date fund. And the idea in a target date fund is to, when you're young and you don't have much assets, to be reasonably aggressive because you know you got you have $100 in the bank, if you lose a lot of that, no problem because you're gonna be getting you know checks for the rest of your life, or at least until you retire. So that red line basically is showing you what the underpinnings are for a target date fund. And that direction of that line is what's called a glide path, much like uh, you know, landing a plane. So oh, what you want to- I didn't know that. Thank you for, for clarifying that. Thanks, Ren. Yeah, so what you want to do in terms of a lifetime plan, and this is what a target date fund is all about, is to be reasonably aggressive when you're young and then to start to move to save as your assets grow. So save and protect is a really good mantra for a lifetime of savings. Now, the boomers on this call, and that's what this is all about, if you haven't saved enough by now, I can't change that. That's a behavioral thing. But what I can tell you is whatever you have saved is dear, and you don't want to lose it. Even if you feel that it's not enough, losing a large part of what's not enough just makes things worse. So at this stage in your life, you should be very, very safe. And I'm going to say exactly, we can tell you what is very, very safe. And you may not agree with us, but maybe you don't even know. So, so, so you should really look. The other part of this glide path is interesting and, and, and reasonably new. Researchers have found that for people who are in the risk zone, they should stay safe for at least five to 10 years in retirement. Then once they're beyond the risk zone and they've been retired for five to 10 years, the, the optimal thing for them to do, believe it or not, is to gradually take a little more risk. And by risk, what we mean is buying more stocks uh, and, and so on, assets that have a promise of, of delivering a reasonably good return. So that's, that's a new finding. You wouldn't get as risky as you were when you were 20, but you would um, you would you start to increase the risk. And the idea underneath that is to extend the life of your savings. Now, the other reasons, so the number one reason that you should be scared as hell for baby boomers is you are in the risk zone. 
The second reason is, is, a, is, a, is a bunch of reasons, but it is highly likely that sometime in the next decade, while you're in the risk zone, some of you are early on, some of you are late on, but uh, most of you are, are in this five to 10 years before and after retirement, there's a very high likelihood that we are going to see a market correction. And you don't have to take my word for that. There are any number what of- does, What does that mean, Ron, a market correction? It, and, and well, let me put a number on it. So in 2008, the typical investor lost 30%. And that by the typical investor, I mean people who are invested pretty much the way most boomers are invested. So whether you know what it is or not, you need to find out. Uh, you, if you're working with advisor, you need to really understand how much you have in equities, how much you have in bonds, how much you have in real estate, how much you have in cash, how much is in various safe assets and risky assets. Um, but I can tell you in 2008, the typical investor was roughly 60% in risky assets, 40% in bonds, which now are really risky because interest rates are almost zero, and very little actually in, in what was safe assets. So that was 30%, <clears throat> a 30% loss in 2008. What has happened since, and let's go to the next slide, Kathy, we can talk about the, the stock okay. markets. So what's gone on since 2008 is the Federal Reserve stepped in and pumped money into the economy and sort of headed off what would have been a real catastrophe. So 2008, the, 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 the mechanics, the machinery to run the economy was locking up. And the solution was really weird, but has worked. And the solution was to solve this problem of spending too much. You ready for this? Yeah. Spending more. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and right. That's really what the, the Fed has done. It's injected $5 trillion into the economy. And this bottom slide, I, I hope you can read it, but I'll just tell you. So on average, if you put $100 into a stock, over the 100-year history of stock markets, you would basically be buying the earnings of that company. And over that 100 years, uh, on average, every $100 you put in, would buy $7 worth of earnings. So you're not just buying the $7 worth of earnings, you're buying growth and so on. Today, if you put $100 in, you're buying $3 worth of earnings, about half as so much. So we're going backwards. We're, 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 we're paying a lot for very little. Yeah. Uh, same story with bonds, but we all know what's going on in the bond market. The, the Fed is manipulating bond yields and controlling them to artificially low levels so if boomers are screwed, by the way, so if if you're wanting to invest your money safely, like in bonds, historically, you could count on a four or five, maybe even six percent coupon uh, yield on, on those bonds. Today, you're, you have to take a longer risk, like a 10 year uh, maturity bond to get two percent. So it's totally ugly. Uh, stocks and bonds are overpriced. Uh, we are having inflation, although the reported number for the um, consumer price index is about 2% inflation. But what's going on is that all of the new money is being put into stocks and bonds. So that's inflating the prices of stocks and bonds. The other reason the stock market is so high is what the press is picking up is what's called FOMO, F-O-M-O. -O. And it's fear of missing out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And this, this, this is the weirdest one because it, the irony here is people sit and, and, and read, uh, you know, watch the, the, the news and read stuff and the markets are reaching new high. And they're afraid that they're going to be stupid if they, yeah. if they miss it. They want, to, they want to get it all. So the market goes up. They want that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and they say, if, you know, if I pull out of the market now and get safe, I'm not going to get it. I'm going to feel really, really dumb. Well, the reality is you're going to feel really, really stupid when the correction happens. So uh, being wow. today is going to have a high high cost. There's another uh, thing called the cleanest dirty shirt. And, I was going to ask you, know, you about that. I about like that. <laughs> well, I'm yes, sorry. So other people who have, have been sending these warnings also talk about the rest of the world. And the rest of the world is in trouble. I'm going to talk more about, about its problems 
But the U.S. is is the cleanest, dirty shirt. It's, it's the least bad. So if you really feel compelled to invest, here's the place to be. Uh, and the fact that the U.S. currency is is the uh, trade currency helps a lot. And then lastly, this has gotten uh, press uh, more and more lately, but there's um, Professor uh, Minsky, he's an economist, who defined this trend called a Minsky moment. And what happens before most recessions and, and stock market losses is a big run-up. And things get really, really expensive. And then um, the, 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 the floor falls out. And that's called a Minsky moment. And uh, we're very likely to have a Minsky moment sometime in the next decade. So um, that's reason number two. Let's go to reason number three, please, Kath, on the, on the next slide. We, I think, are hearing here in the United States, and in fact, the World Bank issued a warning January 9th of this year. And the World Bank is, is the institution for observing economics and, and, and what the banking systems ought to be doing. And there is a world debt crisis. And you may not read about that, but you are reading about the consequences of the debt crisis. The trade wars are an outgrowth of that. Rising gold prices. Bond defaults are just starting to happen, uh, more so outside the U.S., but they're beginning to happen here, which means people who, you, if you've invested in their companies and lent them money, a uh, bond, they are starting to not pay you back. That's called a default. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> There's what's called an inverted yield curve, which basically means normally if you take more risk by uh, having a longer term bond, you get a higher yield, but that's starting not to happen. And that, that is normally a signal of a recession around the corner. Currency devaluations basically means that you're having um, governments consciously making their currency cheaper. They're doing that on purpose uh, to, to buoy off this debt crisis. Negative interest rates, believe it or not, they're the um, when Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, met with uh, the Congress last week, he assured Congress that the Fed would do everything to ward off the next recession, including bringing interest rates below zero. Now, what does that mean? It means if you want to invest $100 and interest rates are negative, when your investment matures, say five years or 10 years from now, you're guaranteed to lose money. Oh, oh, I'm sorry for laughing. What? <laughs> it's, 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 been, it's been going on in other countries. Japan has been doing that for years. Oh. And I, all I can make of that, and a lot of people look at that and they say that doesn't make any sense. But, you know, rather than do that, you just need to find a mattress because uh, at least you won't lose money for sure. Um, recession, yeah. recession fears are are again, sort of uh, emanating from the world debt crisis and inflation. So reason number three is the world is in trouble. The U.S. is, 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 is in deep trouble as well, uh, but the rest of the world is too. So there's really no place to hide. So I hope you're getting scared. <laughs> the I, I am, yeah, yeah. It's, it's um, not a good thing. No, it's, it gets uglier and uglier. So... People read about this, but um, so we're all relying on Social Security. I know I am, and I suspect uh, you are too. Yeah, I sure am, yeah. So it's going to go broke in 2034, and that's that's well documented. This is not just my opinion. So how, how they calculate what money is in Social Security is sort of weird because the money we've all put in doesn't go in any trust fund, but there, there's accounting. 2018 was the first year where the receipts for Social Security were not sufficient to pay the benefits. So the Social Security system is sort of like a pyramid scheme where um, the younger people are paying for the old people. And, and, and the old people are living longer. Old people are living longer. Um, you know, some of the changes in Social Security, like uh, making the retirement age a little uh, older and so on, it's, this, it's put off the ultimate uh, decline, but it's, it's coming. Medicare is going to go broke sooner than that. It'll go broke in six years. What? So part of this debt crisis, yeah, it'll be broke. What? No. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, this is all new to me. I'm really serious, folks. Well, there's, 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 there's plenty if you look. I mean, yeah. all, this, all this documentation isn't hiding. I've written several articles, and I, I contribute to this website called Seeking Alpha, 
and my two most read articles is basically the U.S. is broke, and the and the world is broke. But Medicare in the U.S. Do you think about what's going on with the elections right now? Because these are all intertwined. If the socialist pundits got their way, and the whole country went on Medicare, 2026 is going to happen even sooner. Now the really telling thing is at the bottom of this chart. The official U.S. debt is twenty-three trillion dollars. That's the official number. Wow! But if you look at the, if you look at what we owe for Social Security, it's six trillion dollars more than that. It's twenty-nine trillion. Oh my gosh! And if you look at Medicare, it's, it's even more than that. If you add it all up, it's a hundred trillion dollars. So the, the official twenty-three trillion is wishful thinking. Uh, so the off-balance sheet debt. Uh, just totally swamps uh, the official 23 trillion debt. So the country's broke. So let's go wow. to the fifth reason. <laughs> we'll just keep on going. Jeez. So we've all lived, especially the boomers, have lived with the threat of a nuclear disaster. Uh, I just want to say that hasn't gone away. And certainly North Korea and Iran have, have added to the threats, but um, I mean, there could be just, for example, a dirty bomb goes off in in, uh, in Chicago, you know, in the loop. Uh, that would be devastating. It would, it would certainly uh, ruin everything. Um, the next thing that is very worrisome, uh, this, and the next slide, Kath. Yeah. Are the trade wars? Now, this 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 is a interesting thing because Trump is probably right that we've let other countries take advantage of us and issue tariffs, which means if we want to sell our goods in other countries, people in those countries have to pay extra for our goods. That's the tariff. So he's saying, you guys got to stop that because we're going to do the same thing to you. And that's created this conflict. And that seems to be good in many ways, but I think Trump needs to be careful. And there's a history lesson that <clears throat> we're all too young to, to really know, but it's well documented. <clears throat> In the throes of the Great Depression, in 1930, the U.S. became isolationist and tried to protect itself from the rest of the world. And there was a, uh, an act passed called the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act. Uh, and you can see it down at the bottom of the screen. That, right. that act <clears throat> has been pretty well documented as worsening and deepening and extending the length of the Great Depression. It was a mistake. So... I think we want to be careful to not isolate ourselves. I think we do want to do what's right for America and, and yeah. not, not uh, make it hard for, for our producers and farmers to sell their product. So that, that, that actually is a good thing about the trade wars. The seventh one is uh, basically what I started with. Um, the Federal Reserve is trying really hard and this is an election year and the incumbent president, who we all know is Trump, will probably get reelected if the economy keeps on going as strong as it has, has as it is going. So there's very much an incentive, although the Fed is supposed to be independent of politics, it's supposed to basically be running the economy, not not the, uh, the the government. But there's a lot of pressure being put on on on, on the, uh, the the Fed to forestall what the next recession might be. So it's used up a lot of its ammunition. It's put $5 trillion into the economy. It's uh, lowered interest rates. Um, this graphic is, is a classic. It's called Sisyphus, which is a, a Greek character who is punished by the gods by being forced to push the boulder uphill. And eventually he gets tired and the boulder falls back down. So he keeps on pushing it back up. So, so a little uh, history on, on Sisyphus and what... The Federal Reserve can't push that ball uphill anymore. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's going to come back down and happen. crush them. The ball yep, will come it's back be down bad. and crush them. Yeah. Next slide. The eighth reason, yep, the eighth reason is this is an election year. And I don't know if the socialist ideas will catch on, but they're certainly getting votes. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens. But that's just another reason to, to be um, a little a little frightened. Then the ninth one is sort of interesting too. And um, you all may remember Donald uh, Rusfeld, um, who was Secretary of Defense. And yeah. In the heart of, 
well, what he said, where we we being threatened by wars and so on, was we don't know what we don't know. And actually, I just found out there's a movie about that too. Yeah, 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 there is. Yeah. So things will happen. Stuff will happen. Uh, the most recent one is the coronavirus. Uh, it may or may not materialize. So I, I, I just heard today that the sort of lack of alarm, at least here in the United States, is that the death rate is only 2%. So that's fairly low. Uh, of course, you wouldn't want to get it and run that risk. Yeah. But in the SARS virus, which is the last threat like this, it started at 2%, but it rose to close to 30%. So nobody knows yet how bad the coronavirus is going to be and, and what sort of uh, spread it might have. And then finally, for the 10th reason, and it's really coming back to the reason that many people, well, many people may be hanging in with their current risk because they don't know. And, and that's certainly stupid. Um, but the, the most important thing is you, you need to know and protecting your lifetime of savings is just plain smart. So I'm actually going to read these because I, I want to make sure that I remember them all. But the 10 reasons we just covered are number one, the boomers are in the risk zone. The stock and bond markets are extremely expensive. There's a world debt crisis that is going to shake things loose. Uh, it's been going on for a while. Entitlements are, are running out of money. So Social Security and Medicare are, are going broke. The threat of nuclear uh, disaster continues. The trade wars may be good, may be bad. We need to be careful. The Federal Reserve is out of ammunition. ammunition. It's, it's told Congress it's going to do everything it can uh, in 2020. But by the way, recessions are a normal thing. They happen. It's just um, <laughs> in an election year, they're no good. So the, the history of sort of the four-year term of the president is the first two years are generally not particularly good, and the last two years tend to be better, and it's because of this way that the Fed can sort of ward things off, but not forever. Uh, the other, the um, eighth reason is we have the 2020 election. The ninth is we don't know what we don't know. So something, some good things are going to happen, some bad things are going to happen, but stuff is going to happen. And then the tenth reason is finally, you need to be smart, and you need to find out how you are invested. And here's where we can help. We need to go to the next slide now, Kath. You should be scared as hell. 60, 40, 60, 40 stocks, bonds is what you're likely to find is is the way you're invested. By the way, this 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 number I'm telling you is is, is been determined by the Employee Benefit Research Institute. And they do these studies and they, 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 they find that the average allocation for everybody, but most importantly, including baby boomers, is 60% in stocks and 40% in bonds. It's interesting that consultants for, I've been doing this for 50 years, the safe place to go if you don't really know what the, 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 the enough about the client is to go middle of the road. And 60 40 is considered the middle of the road. But I'll tell you for people in the risk zone, my fellow baby boomers, that's not middle of the road. That's, that's, that's very risky uh, because you can't afford to, to lose that savings. So in the next slide, I'm going to come back to what I originally said. You cannot afford to wait yeah run run and for sure you, don't let your don't don't let the door hit you in the rear end keep run, going yeah. run run now and i will tell you that i'm not the only one saying this and celebrity journalists uh, I've, I've, I've actually had a nice email from from somebody i've, I've gotten to know and, and she says this is this is the story i've been telling forever they won't move until they lose their money that's right. Yeah. And then it will be too late. So this little picture is sort of fun. I, I have a, a very successful consultant who, who ran a very successful firm, and he would tell people that if they don't take his advice, they're going to end up living under the bridge eating cat food. So um, 
Please, and that can yeah, really no. happen. That's a serious. That's a serious thing, Ron. You're absolutely right. You know, I think a lot of reasons why people uh, don't act is because they're comfortable where they're at right now, and it's always it can happen to somebody else, but it just can't happen to me there's, until there's it that, does. They're, they're exactly that, and there's also this thing we see once a week on TV: the market reaches new highs, and to get out of the market, I think. Investors sit there and say, I don't want to miss it. Yeah. I would be, I would be stupid to miss this. Right. Uh, and I, I'll just tell you that you'll be feeling much more stupid. Yeah. <laughs> when, so this correction, I'm not saying it's going to happen next week, next month, next year. But I'm saying sometime in the next decade, very high likelihood that, uh, that there will be a, a significant decline in both stock and bond prices. So here's what you need to do. Okay, wait just a second. So what you're really saying is that it's not it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. It's a question of when and how bad. And how bad. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And most people are looking at this think it's going to be really bad. So Ugh. it's all about sort of there's there's some people see this and they go, "Well, I can buy safer stocks or I can buy safer bonds." I'm just going to tell you that that won't move the needle. And I can also tell you that the old adage about 100 minus your age is still going to put you too much at risk. So if you're 60 and you're putting 40% in, in stocks and bonds, that's still too high. So you really need to move to, to the safer assets, in particular treasury bills. And there's this investment called Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, uh, otherwise known as TIPS, T-I-P-S. And what tips basically do that other investments don't is there's a guarantee that if there's inflation, uh, it will make you whole. So the promised return on a treasury inflation protected security might be, for example, 3%. But if inflation is another 3%, you will get 6%. And what you want to guard against, especially with the world debt crisis, is a... Uh, uh, having serious erosion in the purchasing power of, of your money uh, because of inflation. So you need to get educated. Let's just, uh, see the next slide, please, Kath. Okay. And we can help. If you have an advisor, I think you need to, to, to go back to them and say, how am I invested? Why am I invested that way? Help me understand. I just watched this show, and they tell me that um, – I'm, I'm going to say it. Right now, you shouldn't be – much in stocks and bonds. You might want to have some for diversification, but 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 no more than 20 to 30%. No more than that in stocks and bonds. Now, I'm saying that for people in general. You may want to take more risk, and I can help you there too. But um, So you want to get educated, and really what you want to do is on the right-hand side of that, that graphic there is an asset allocation. And it's how much in U.S. stocks, how much in non-U.S. stocks, which, is, by the way, is a good idea to get diversified. How much in real estate, how much in U.S. bonds, how much in foreign bonds. And then finally, in terms of the safe assets, how much in uh, treasury bills, which are very safe, and treasury inflation protected securities. So the last slide is, is our offer to help you. And... The last show we did was on smart do-it-yourself investing, where we shared with you the four pillars of smart investing. Um, please read that article. And, and the way you can get that article and, and get our help is to first Google age sage robo. And then you will be brought to our website where you can get the four pillars of smart investing. But also for, and this is where I guess the commercial comes in, for a very low price, I'm going to ask you to pay, pay me $50. Right. <laughs> yeah. To, to get my suggestion on how you should be investing. What you want to do is look at how you are invested now. Look at my suggestion. And you don't have to take my advice. And the website basically says this. This is, this is educational. And... For us to continue to do these shows, I need to get paid a little bit. So curiosity seekers can go out there, but they're not going to get any free free look. Right. Uh, a little bit. 
And I see, Kathy, we just had a question. Yeah, that's from uh, Dale. Uh, he wanted to see, how do you see the market responding this year? Hi, Dale. Hi, Dale. How are you? <laughs> so, so it's an election year. I think the Fed will do everything it can to put off the recession. So good chance the, the, the things will be okay this year. So, but I'm, I'm saying, don't wait. I could be wrong. I, I mean, nobody has a crystal ball. And no boomer can afford to take the next hit that we're likely to get. Now, if we're lucky, maybe it'll happen slowly. But if we're not, you know, something we don't know will happen and it'll just happen overnight, which has happened before. And it'll be too late to get out. Yeah. So actually, one of my friends, one of my friends had a successful consulting firm and he wrote this article that was really a, a hoot. And it was uh, called The uh, Hubris of medical doctors <laughs> and it was all about and, and it was it was it was this is a true story he documented this but experimental aircraft that crashed were almost always owned and flown by medical doctors and he said the doctors felt that they were so smart that if something bad were to happen that they were smart enough to react and know what to do so the moral, of course, is obvious. We may think we're smart enough to react and know what to do and get out of the way. And we may read guys who are telling us to get out now or come in now or buy this stock. By the way, some of the, the gurus that I see on the internet are, are, they're dangerous. Yeah. They're really dangerous. And some, for example, will say, buy these three mutual funds and uh, this real estate thing. And it's the same advice for everybody. And it's really, really risky, especially for baby boomers. So. Um, please be wary of that. It, um, it's, it's not good. So Kath, I, I think the last thing I want to do is just let people know that uh, we're doing this thing every other week. We're on Facebook and YouTube. So if you Google either Facebook or YouTube and then search for Age Sage Robo, uh, you can watch our, our first show and then, of course, the, uh, the replay of this one. And um, our next one's going to be on financial theory. So I'm going to try to educate people on Nobel Prize winning financial theory uh, that if you follow it, it would be smart. But also I'm going to tell you about what financial advisors are doing and how they use financial theory and uh, what you need to be weary, uh, aware of. It, it, it's, not, it's not all bad. It's just you need to be aware of, of, of how the world works. So uh, thank you. We'll okay, well, we, I, I want to ask a question on, on uh, the whole show today. So let's say, for instance, you've got a, a, a friend or whatever that has money, but they don't really have it invested. They've got it in the bank. There's somehow they got some savings and everything they could possibly be losing that money now if they have invested personally in some stocks and that they don't really have anyone that's giving them any advice. Now, if they can just do the Age Sage uh, uh, Robo Advisor for $50, they can get a feel for where they're at right now. It's worth it for $50 is the way I look at it. But should they be having somebody that is advising them? Yeah. So I think most people aren't educated about finance and investing. So an, an, right. advisor, an advisor is a good idea. Um, but trust but even, verify is even a better idea. So it, 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 financial advice is, is, is what's called a credence good. It means uh -huh. you have to trust. It's sort of like going to your doctor. You don't know if you graduated last in this class or first, but you, it couldn't hurt for you to find out. Uh, yeah. Your car mechanic is a credence good. So what I'm offering here is is a is a check, and you don't want to argue with your financial advisor. I think if 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 what I show you is so different from what you're currently doing, um, you may want to look for another advisor. And there's plenty of them out there, and plenty of systems to to help you find one. The other thing I will say is, is if you follow my advice, I'm going to show you how you can buy your own portfolio of stocks and bonds and cash and so on, exactly what mutual funds to buy. 
Wow. Okay. And I'm also going to show you how you can pay very little for those mutual funds. And I'll even put, so if you have a $100,000 portfolio, I will show you how you will spend no more than $30 per year. What? Yes. No more than $30 per year. That's, that's three basis points. Wow. Three hundredths of a percent. If you choose what I call the least expensive approach, you can certainly get more expensive and, and I'll let you, if you're on Fidelity or Vanguard or something like that, if you're a little more advanced investor, uh, you can tell my system to put you on those systems. So I give you just Vanguard funds or just Fidelity funds, you know, whatever you prefer, uh, but you won't benefit from the three basis point um, uh, low fee. Okay, so now that's where the do-it-yourself comes in. Yes. So the, the baby boomer is really now taking uh, control, and they get to see where everything is going. They certainly can still have a financial advisor. Yes. But they use your system, and, well, I like that. I do, too. I, I, yeah. I, no, I really do. I like that. And, and uh, well, it gives you a, a clear feeling of that you've got control over over where your money's going. Yeah, no, no, also, Ed, Kath, and this is going to sound like more of a sales pitch, but it's not. $50 isn't going to move the needle for me. It's just, yeah. What, right. what, I really, what I really want is, is to not give this away because I think it's important. But I don't want to charge so much that uh, it stops people from using it. Right, so, right. Uh, I, I, I really believe that the next correction is going to be so ugly. And I'll even tell you, in 2008, uh, Target Date Funds is, 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 is a place where I've lived for the last 10 years. So in 2008, people in Target Date Funds who were near retirement lost about 30%. And it created an uproar. And there were joint hearings, the only joint, only joint hearings ever of the SEC and the Department of Labor to solve the problem with Target Date Funds. And nothing's happened since 2008. But the fact that there was such an uproar sort of tells you how important it is. There was $20 billion in target date funds in 2008. Today, there's $2 trillion in target date wow. funds. Wow. So if you can sort of imagine 10 times the uproar. So what happened was beneficiaries had no clue. Mm -hmm. They lost 30%. And they went crying and then yelling to everybody like, oh, me, I lost all my money. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you the other thing that happened in 2008. And I just, it, it really, really irks me. The fund companies two years later, because the market bounced back, said, no problem. We earned all your money back. All this good. No harm, no foul. Many of those people took their money out and never got back. They never enjoyed the pop-up. In, in, the, in the stock market and many people who are watching this call if they don't follow my advice and get out of the way now by the way you should get back in i'm not sure what we're going to do when, when it's time to get back in but we'll, we'll try to deal with that when yeah when, right when that happens yeah. uh, but you <laughs> hey, don't Ryan, you, you, got a, you got a question from from dale here uh -huh. he says uh have you heard of bill bonner he, uh, he gets mar gives market tips what's your opinion yeah it was I have, I have no crystal ball, and those guys, uh, there's many of them. You'll find a bunch on Seeking Alpha, uh, and you can you can you can subscribe to their newsletters. They're not much at all. If you watch enough of them, you'll see that guys who are calling up, you have any number of other guys who are calling down. Um, they'll all tell you that they have a great track record. Um, I think it's really really hard to do that, but it's pretty easy to get paid for it. Yeah, yeah, because people don't know where to go. So if you're doing it yourself, the, 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 here's what comes to my mind for, during this whole thing is if you've got kids and you've got grandkids and you've been saving and you feel good about yourself because you feel you've got a nest egg that you can leave for your kids that can then help to bring your, your grandkids through college and everything else, if you lose that, because you didn't act, then shame on you. 
because yeah. now we're making everything we're, we're giving you this awareness and if those uh people are that are giving advice and telling you to do something and it requires you having to hire somebody else to do it and they're not giving you the good advice then better you should do it yourself and and bring an advisor so. yeah. into it and let the advisor know what you're doing as opposed to them telling you what to do does that make sense or, or? Yeah, it does. And, okay. and in, in the past, I think things were sort of the way they've been for years and years because we didn't have the boomer bubble. Mm -hmm. But now there's, there's 78 million people. Um, I, I say this show is also for the young people. And let me just say how, how first of all, the, the, the market fears are, 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 are their fears as well. Yeah. Uh, but they'll probably come back. But the fear for them should be 78 million old people now become dependent on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because when they run out of money, the social programs are there. And thank God for, for America caring about it, its older people. Uh, but there are programs in place, you know, Medicaid, uh, Medicare, all that stuff. Um, that Aspis. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It's, they'll spill back on young people so anyway that's the show i thought that was absolutely excellent ron you brought home some very good points as we started out with the show i was telling everyone that i'm a baby boomer that doesn't really understand finance even though my brother is in the in that business it's amazing that through the years that i never really got to grasp it so you brought this home for me because i get it now Okay. So hopefully, if there's any baby boomers that are watching this that are just like me, that don't really understand the savvy of it, but now you have an opportunity, you can continue to keep watching these shows because every other week we'll get, or bi-monthly, we'll give you an insight as to what's going on for you as a baby boomer and how you should be investing, not telling you you have to, but this is what you should do. And also the the problems that could occur if you don't. I, it's true, the financial crisis, the financial setback can hurt your health, it can hurt your family, it can hurt your the, the way of living. And I think that just taking your own personal step to move forward and spend $50 or find some other way, if you don't want to use Ron's plan, you don't have to, but at least come back to, to get the uh, information. It just makes sense to do it yourself and then let your advisor know that this is what I've done. Okay, that's just my two cents, folks, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kat. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, we'll see you in a couple of weeks from now. Okay. Bye.